right, hello there, thrill seekers. Happy Halloween to you all. That was a little snippet of my cover of the song Godzilla by Blue Oyster Cult. And it's on my video channel if you want to go look at the whole thing. And there are some excellent surprises in the video, well, in the song that you might not be expecting. So it is trying to prove my theory that a certain song that you might be familiar with was actually stolen from Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla. So today is Halloween and apparently Halloween has been canceled in Japan. This is a big scandal. When I lived in Japan, Halloween was not yet a thing. Uh, there was a Halloween episode of Ultraman Tiga which was real unusual because, it, and it might have had something to do with me being in the company, I don't really know, but no, Japanese people didn't really know anything about Halloween, and but they made, a, they made an episode, which the show is supposedly set in the future, set around now, I think, and because uh, it was made in 1996. So anyway, the uh, in the... Future Japan, as envisioned in 1996, Halloween is a big deal. And actually, Halloween has become kind of a big deal in big cities in Japan like Tokyo, uh, to the point where it's become a problem. So apparently, uh, they're, they're telling people not to celebrate Halloween in Shibuya, which is a big, district, a big uh, drinking sort of partying district in Tokyo. So uh, I guess we'll see how that goes. I guess it's probably already gone by now. So uh, maybe uh, whatever happened, I guess it's already happened. Anyway, since I sang the song Godzilla, I was trying to think of something Godzilla related to talk about. And if you are familiar with my blog, which is hardcorezen.info, that's my blog, it's still up there. I don't update it as often as I should, but there's, there's some, I don't know, it was a few months ago that I put new stuff. Anyway, like a, a year or two ago, I decided, because I hadn't updated the blog in a long time, to use it as a sort of repository so, for kind of failed ideas. And one of my failed ideas that I proposed to New World Library, my publishers, and they liked the idea, was to do a book called The Zen of Godzilla. The problem with The Zen of Godzilla is I got three chapters into it. I think it was three, maybe it was four. And I uh, couldn't think of anything else. And in fact, the, the last chapter that I wrote for the book, I felt really stretched the, the idea of it being about Godzilla at all. It was a chapter about the monster warehouse at Tsuburaya Productions, which is this uh, place where we kept all the monster costumes. It used to be the place where they kept all the monster costumes from the shows, but by the time I worked there, they kept the monster costumes from the actual TV shows and movies somewhere else. But what was in the monster warehouse were the ones they used in the live stage shows. So they, they were kind of almost the same, but a little bit, uh, the quality was maybe a little bit lower in some cases. Anyhow, I wrote a, a, a piece, a chapter about finding a baby bird in the monster warehouse. And you can read that if you go to the hardcorezen.info and, and scroll back a couple of months or a couple of, not a couple of months, a couple of pages, you know, whatever, pages of, of stuff go back in time. The, all of the chapters I wrote for the Zen of Godzilla are up there in complete their complete form because I couldn't I couldn't come up with the rest of the book. But one of the first places I got introduced to Buddhism in a way that that was sort of subtle and I didn't realize it was Buddhism at the time was in a particular episode of Ultraman that says Urutoraman in case you can't read that. And this is a little sort of um, there's a there's a word for these. Um, Maybe somebody knows it, uh, like Furlongetti's or something. There's, there's actually a word for this. I learned it. It's a comic book made out of uh, screen grabs and stills from a movie or a TV show. And that's what this is. And it kind of came in a box with, uh, with two other uh, comic books. Ooh, I didn't close it right. I have to close it like this. It came in this box. And it is one of my favorite episodes of Ultraman. 
And the episode is called Kaiju Hakaba, which means monster graveyard or the monster graveyard is probably how you want to express it in English. And in this episode, the science patrol, the, the guys who kind of help Ultraman fight monsters, the sort of five person human team, one of whom can transform into Ultraman, they go into outer space and they discover the Kaiju Hakaba, the graveyard of monsters. And this is the place where Ultraman takes the uh, bodies of the monsters that he kills when he fights them on planet Earth. And they circle the Earth. And that's the, the graveyard of monsters. Uh, Ultraman, in case you did not know, is a big giant dude. He's uh, like 40 meters tall, which I guess in feet is about 120 feet. So the monsters he fights are like Godzilla-sized monsters. And the show is, as maybe you can tell, a live action show. I always point this out because people imagine it's a cartoon if they haven't seen it. It wasn't a cartoon. It was live action show with guys in rubber costumes playing the characters in miniature sets and all that stuff so in this episode they discover the monster where or sorry the monster graveyard and they all start to feel kind of sad about what they've done to these monsters whose only crime was that they were too big and awkward to live on earth and were causing a lot of problems As some of the monsters in ultraman are are kind of evil beings from outer space bent on taking over the earth but a lot of them are just uh, creatures that are just too big and too radioactive and whatever to live and so this is a, a scene uh, that you can see here uh, this is directed by Akio Jisoji, who was a friend of my friend Yagi Takeshi, and Yagi-san is has just written a book about Akio Jisoji. He was a very interesting artsy guy who directed a lot of Ultraman episodes, and he directed them in this kind of artsy Fellini-esque style. And here you can see Fuji, Agent Fuji, is being very pensive and sort of sad. And then the guy who's uh, at the bottom of the page um, over here is Hayata, who becomes Ultraman, and he's feeling bad about what he, do, he did to all those monsters, and sort of he goes up on the roof and transforms himself into Ultraman, and there's this little scene, he can't really tell because it's just a still, but he's kind of mourning the monsters. And so they decide to have a funeral for the monsters. And in the Japanese version, you can, here you can see these are Buddhist priests, probably of the Pure Land sect, and they are chanting the Heart Sutra for the monsters. And then the monsters are uh, represented by these framed pictures, framed black and white pictures with a little black ribbon on them. That's a kind of a traditional thing to do in a Japanese Buddhist funeral. In fact, it's a traditional thing to do in Japanese f funerals of all kinds, because I, the, the Tsuburaya Company, uh, that I worked for. A lot of people at the company I worked for in Japan were Catholic, Japanese Catholics. So it was kind of ironic. I was an American Buddhist working at a company where a good portion of the company, I don't know how many, 25% or something, a fairly large portion of the company were Japanese Catholics. Uh, and uh, but so in, I've been to a few of their funerals and they do almost the same sort of uh, rituals at Japanese Catholic funerals as they do as Japanese Buddhist funerals because Japanese people are not that concerned about religion it's kind of a funny thing they, they're not like Americans who get very really rigid about their religions they kind of uh, let everything you know just kind of go wherever it wants to go but in the Japanese version of this show these monks or priests are chanting the Heart Sutra. Now, in the American version, which is what I saw when I was a kid, uh, the chanting of the Heart Sutra, everything is dubbed into English. And so when they chant the Heart Sutra, whoever dubbed this thing, they, they probably didn't know what it was. To all the creatures I have destroyed, I am sorry that I had to do it, even though it wasn't your fault. I had to keep the peace in this world. In his heart, Ultraman also felt sorry for the monsters he had destroyed. He agreed with the science patrol that memorial services should be held. After discussion,
Russians, it was decided that they would hold the services the following day. The science patrol prayed for the monsters to rest in peace. They recalled each of the battles and knew they were forced into doing what had to be done. But in the Japanese version, it's quite clearly the Heart Sutra. Which is the main sutra of, well, a lot of sects of Buddhism, but it's certainly the main sutra of Zen Buddhism. And they're beating on a mokugyo, which is, mokugyo means wooden fish. And if you watched my video of Don't Fear the Reaper, you saw me hitting a, a small mokugyo. Uh, this is a, a rather large mokugyo. You can't, you can't see it that well in the picture because it's at the bottom of the screen. But uh, it's a big mokugyo, a big version of that thing that I'm that I'm hitting in the uh, Don't Fear the Reaper video that I did. Uh, and it makes a sound and it kind of helps you keep the rhythm of the chanting. So the, the other thing that I just noticed when I was preparing this video that I had not noticed before is this little booklet makes a big point out of this, this um, you know, I don't know what the official name of this thing is, but people, I should look that up and if I find out what it is, which I don't know if I will be able to, you will see it on the screen or you will see the words, I didn't find out what it's called, <laughs> and maybe somebody can tell me. But these are little plaques that they have in Japanese, uh, they, they use them as fun at funerals, and they also sometimes display them in the home after the funeral has happened. They'll put it in a certain little spot in the home where you keep kind of a mem memorials for, for the deceased people of the family. And it will have the posthumous Buddhist name of the person on there, or it might, I don't know, maybe in some cases it doesn't have, a, it just has their actual name. I don't know. I think in the cases I've seen, it's the posthumous Buddhist name. But then again, I don't know what they do uh, for Catholics. Uh, I, I can't remember in the Tsuburaya case whether they just put their own uh, normal name on these things or not. Anyhow, what it says in the little booklet, I will, I will translate to you very painstakingly, which I, I did. It says, uh, at the suggestion of Akiko, uh, Fuji Akiko, who's the woman member of the team, she's the one crying there in the corner there. At, the, at Akiko's suggestion, they decide to have a funeral service uh, for the monsters. And the science patrol puts the monsters' pictures on display with the proper little, like, like I said, the little um, ribbons on them. And then it says, the monsters are given the difficult posthumous Buddhist name of Uchu in Myo Kaiju Ishi. <laughs> and that's what that says there. And I had a hell of a time trying to come up with what that means. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk you through what it means, and maybe together we can put it together as a, into something coherent. Uchu means outer space. In was the the next character just just gave me a hell of a time. But I think uh, in this case, it can mean a lot of things. It can mean an institution or, or various things. But in this case, I think it means formerly. So formerly of outer space. And then myoho is also difficult because it means, uh, it means exquisite or mysterious law. And it's part of the name of the heart of the, sorry, the Lotus Sutra, not the Heart Sutra. Uh, as in Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, that people from the Nichiren sect chant. That's the Myoho in there. And in this case, I don't know what it means. It might be mysterious. So let's just say it means mysterious. Then the next word is Kaiju, which is monster. And the final one is means householder. And it's a suffix 
for the name of uh, the deceased person if that person was not a monk. So it's, it means householder or lay person. So they are the mysterious monsters formerly of outer space lay persons or something like that. It's, it's quite weird and... You know, I should be an expert in this stuff, but there's a there's a lot of stuff in Japanese that still throws me for a loop, and this is one of them. I really don't know. I would have to go consult with a Japanese friend, and I didn't have time to do that before making this video today, uh, to see what that means. So if anybody is uh, is more fluent in Japanese than me and can and can figure out exactly what that means uh, leave me a comment and uh, and I'll uh, I'll be glad to hear from you but this is this was somehow this must have seeped into my brain I don't really know because I didn't have you know like when I first met uh, Tim McCarthy my first Zen teacher and started seeing kind of Zen stuff around I didn't relate it back to watching Ultraman as a kid but I did have this kind of memory of that funeral service that I'd seen on TV. And it kind of shows you the way this stuff kind of seeps into the culture. Because it's just part of, of the culture. It's part of ordinary culture. If you're going to have a funeral, you have a, a Buddhist funeral. Sorry, sorry, I had to move a little bit. My butt cheek fell asleep. Anyway, <laughs> when you have a funeral in Japan, uh, generally speaking, Buddhist funerals are what you do. Uh, Japanese are very kind of, as I said, fluid about their religion. So when there's a happy thing to be done, like celebrating a person's coming of age or um, I think births and, and things like that, it's uh, usually a Shinto uh, service uh, or Shinto ceremony or whatever it is, uh, because Shinto is associated with those kind of lively, nice things that make people happy. And when there's a funeral to be had or something sad happens, they usually go to the Buddhists. So that's what they do. And and when they want to have a wedding, they generally have a, a Christian wedding. Uh, so there you go. In Japan, people are... Americans are often surprised because Americans take their religions very, very seriously. And they're, you know, the differences between one religion and another is a big deal. You know, even among sects of Christianity, like uh, around the corner from me is a, a Baptist. No, is it a Baptist? I think it's a Baptist church. Let's say it's a Baptist church. And then uh, less than a block away, there's a Seventh-day Adventist church. And they're both Christian denominations, but I'm sure they would never you know, go to each other's places. Whereas in Japan, it's just like whatever, you know, they, a, a Japanese person, to make the equivalence, might go to the Seventh-day Adventist thing for the birthday party or the coming-of-age ceremony and then run over to the Baptists for the funeral and think nothing of it. So that's, that's kind of the way they treat their religions there. Everything is very, you know, fluid. Uh, not many people consider themselves to be like, I am, you know, Shinto. You know, or I am a Soto Buddhist and I don't go to anything else. You know, that, that's really, that would be very unusual. So there you go. That was my first introduction to Buddhism was in this episode of Ultraman. So uh, Ultraman was created mainly by the same team who created Godzilla. They, they, a lot of the same people were concurrently working on Godzilla movies when and Ultraman TV shows at the same time, including Eiji Tsuburaya, who was the founder of the company I worked for, who was also the special effects director for all of the, the classic Godzilla movies. He died in 1970. So, but every, every Ultraman, or sorry, every Godzilla movie made from the first one in 1954 up until uh, 1970s, uh, I think Godzilla's Revenge uh, had him as a special effects director. So there you go. That's it. That's that's my uh, little Halloween special. Hope you enjoyed some of the music videos I did for Halloween. I enjoyed putting them together. And I don't know if I'm going to go on to Thanksgiving or Christmas theme next. We shall see. But anyway, if you want to contribute to me buying candy to pass out to the kids tonight, which I'm going to do, and I'm, I bought a bunch of dinosaur toys to pass out to them too, so we'll see how that goes. I'll see if they take the dinosaur toys or the candy, uh, but I, maybe I'll let you know. Uh, so if you want to contribute to me buying more of that stuff, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info 
slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are how I make my money. And I appreciate your support, but you don't got to support me if you don't want to. And in case you uh, are in or around Bozeman, Montana, I will be there starting, I believe, November 8th. But if you want to get actual information about where and when I'll be in Bozeman, go to hardcorezen.info slash events. And there you will find all the information. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. All right, there's Ziggy, and he is in his Halloween outfit. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this to you. Well, you probably, I don't know if you can see it. His Halloween outfit says, if you've got it, haunt it. Let's see if I can get a view of it. <laughs> he doesn't like the, the laptop going over top of his head. There you go. I hope you can see it. Anyway, Ziggy, you look cute in your Halloween outfit. We'll talk to you later. Bye.